Hey, I'm Gaur. I'm a freelance colorist and color scientist from Estonia, and I have made yet another DC tell for you. This time it's uh, the palette matcher, which uh, as of recording this video is on version 1.2. And well, this tool is made to match specific hues given to you as a palette as RGB values. For example, maybe a director has given you a palette or or maybe you have a painting or some reference uh, footage from another movie that uh, you should match. Then you can use the palette, the color palette OFX, which is included in DaVinci Resolve to get some colors from the palette of the frame and then you can use those and match them. So this is a great part of look creation to put together your gamut, your colors. Well, without further ado, let's uh, head over to Dimitri Resolve and see how to use it. So as usual, I have set up a demo project with manual color management, uh, going from Oriloxy to DaVinci White Gamut on the clip level and on the timeline level going to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 for my display. And where we'll be doing our look development is on the group post clip level. Also, I have prepared this small palette of four colors, a dark blue, a light blue, a dark green and a light green shade. So if we search for digital and put it on our node, quickly find the palette matcher version 1.2 in this case, we can start by inputting the reference color. Let's go top down. So the first one will be 16, 37 and 47. And as you can see already on the image, on, at the bottom, we can see our selected color with the show patch option, which is selected by default. And the highlight selection is also selected by default, which will show the selection that will be modified. Now, the modifiable selection will be centered around the reference hue. But if we think about it, if we want to bring other hues to the reference hue, then, well, we want to target hues that aren't there already. So we will shift the selection hue. Now, don't use the top one. This will shift the actual reference color where we want to bring our colors. This is for artistic intentions if you don't like your color selected reference color precisely. But we will change the selection hue. So in one direction we get to green, but we want to get to dark blue colors. So I'll try to find about the middle point and then I can change the hue width to select more blue colors. Now because this is dark blue, we will also want to create a selection in terms of luminance. So I'll bring down the luminance selection to bottom, the center of it, and then I'll start decreasing the luminance width. So we don't select the brighter colors that much. And I can also select uh, matte mode under the highlight selection to see more clearly what is selected and whatnot. And right away, I'll see that we have a quite a bit of black pixels selected in the background that we don't see in the normal highlight selection mode. This is because nothing's broken. It's just the way that highlight selection works, where selected pixels are kept their original color and pixels that aren't selected are painted black. But in this case, the background pixels are black already and everything else is also painted black that isn't selected. So we can't really tell the difference between selected black pixels and pixels that aren't selected and thus painted black. So if we enable matte mode, pixels that are selected will be painted white and pixels that are not selected will be painted black, much more clear. Now, in the exclusion part of the DCTL, we can increase blacks, which will exclude them, as the name says. And also we can do it for whites if we so want to. And now I'd say we have a pretty good selection in terms of dark blues. I'll disable highlight selection and I will finally also disable bypass. And now we can see the end result. 
where if I do a before and after, as you can see, it changes the hue. But what isn't quite correct is the saturation. This is because in the blend section, hue is being changed by default 100%, but saturation is not. So if we start increasing saturation, you'd expect it to get more saturated, but zero is the original saturation of the pixels we're changing, and one is the reference saturation. So if we bring it to one, we should get the exact saturation level of the inputted reference RGB value. Now, I don't like how it is at 100%, so I'll find something in between. So if I do a before and after, as you can see, we get quite a nice shade. But now we want to change light blues. One might maybe add a serial node, but we want to take information from the original, because if we put a bunch of these on top of each other, and they overlap even a bit, then one changes a pixel that the next one reads as input and changes and the next one and the next one and the next one and then we start getting a lot of artifacts. So instead, first of all, disable show patch and I'll do Alt or Command P and I'll get a parallel node. And I'll add two more for a total of four parallel nodes that I'll be using. So I'll select the next one. Actually, I'll rename the first one Dark blue and let's go with the second one which will be sorry light blue so let's select a dc tell again and input our next shade so 12 70 and 83 now looking at image we are barely selecting a single shade but if we start looking around not the green spot there we go a light blue and i'll again increase the width so something like that and Again, we only want to select the lighter colors, so I'll also help it uh, along by using luminance. I'll decrease the range, but if I bring it to one, as you can see, only the very brightest parts of the image are selected, because originally uh, the image doesn't have very bright pixels, only a, a small sliver of them. So instead, I'll start bringing the luminance center point a bit down, so something like that, and start increasing it. So we get something like this. I'd say this could be a really good selection. Let's see it in matte mode. Again, we have some black pixels we don't want, so deselect those with the blacks exclusion, and I'd say this is quite a nice selection. Now, we can disable bypass, and instantly we'll see a difference before and after, but you might be noticing it is also changing quite a bit of the darker pixels, the darker blue shades. And this is because our selection mask isn't too precise, and I would say this is a good thing, because the more precise, the more sharp we make it, the more chance there is of getting artifacts and banding and whatnot. So I'd say broader and softer is better. So we have our light blues. If we want, we could finesse it a bit more to select or, or modify less of the dark blues, but I'd say the total of these two is quite close to where I want to be. So I will move on to the dark greens and light greens. So again, I'll drag on another instance of the DC tell and input my next shade. So, there we go. This, uh, as you can see, if we have many parallel nodes, the show patch won't look correct. If I disable the first two, then it will look correct, but the other ones will be overlaying their pixels, so it will not look correct anymore. There we go. Uh, so, let's start again shifting the hue to find the green pixels we want, not the blue ones this time, but dark green. Let's see. So they live somewhere around here, but this time it isn't that easy to see, so I'll enable matte mode, because we are targeting dark pixels. So I'll actually sweep the hue range in matte mode, and I'm just looking at the tree itself. 
So as we can see, this is about where I'd like to be. Maybe it makes a hue a bit wider. Yeah, that's good. And then I'll use luminance to exclude the brighter shades. So I think I'm happy with that. I'll exclude some blacks, exclude some whites. Doesn't do that much. And I'll disable highlight selection and bypass. And as you can see instantly, the greens, the dark greens are getting a bluish, a bluish tone, a bluish undertone. And I can also play with saturation to decrease the saturation. I think that looks a bit better. It isn't so in your face. And finally, let's repeat what we've done already three times with the bright greens. So input our RGB value, shift the hue to select the shades we want, increase the range a bit. There we go. Find the luminance of the brighter ones, increase it a bit, something like that. Again, showing matte mode, getting rid of those black pixels, very nice. And finally, disabling bypass. And as you can see, this hue is quite different. And again, I'll play with saturation, bring it up quite a bit. And there we go. So looking at this and before and after, I'll also disable the last patch. That's better. We have made quite a difference in the gamut of this image with just four nodes. But finally, I will show you what to do if you want to change the whites, the blacks, or whatever of a grayscale pixels. Uh, not a serial node, my bad, a parallel node. And the problem arises when you want to get some saturation out of neutral pixels. So let's see, I'll select, uh, let's, let's say it, it will be a greenish tint. A greenish, maybe a bit of cyan tint. This is all by hand uh, that we want to give our white pixels. And then I don't care about the hue of the original pixel only about the luminance. So I'll select the brightest pixels, something like that. And now when I press bypass, well, the selection is a bit too broad and changing a lot of pixels we don't want to change. So I'll go a bit up and make the selection much less broad. So something like that, maybe. Okay, let's see. That's a bit better, but still looking at our whites, almost nothing is changing. Well, this is because even if I change this saturation, as you can see on the waveform, something is changing a tad bit, but not enough. This is because the saturation goes from original saturation to reference saturation. But that isn't really precisely what it's doing. It takes the full saturation range of 0 to 1 and maps it down to 0 to reference saturation. What this means in practice is that white pixels or any grayscale pixels will not get saturation because by definition they don't have any. So instead, we will need to use the boost saturation slider. This will force saturation even on pixels that don't have it. And now, as you can see, and when I bypass it, the before and after, we get a nice green hue. And we can change it with hue shift if we so want to. So that's how to add a hue shift or a kind of color wash to grayscale pixels with this tool. Well, I guess that's about it. If you like what you saw, then uh, you can look down in the doobly-doo for a link to buy the tool. And also while on Gumroad, you can check out my demo pack, which has pretty much all of my tools, but with a watermark applied, so you can test them out 
to see if you like them. And there are also some freebies, so look out for those. Anyways, see you in the next one.